Another scoring winger has been signed by the Vancouver Canucks. The Boston Bruins should still hedge their bets, though, when it comes to adding at the wing. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Monday, July 22nd, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Before we get started, a quick reminder: you can find the podcast on social media at Locked NHL Bruins, and you can find me, my hockey thoughts, dad jokes at Ian C McLaren. I am a lifelong Bruins fan, and I've been covering this team for various outlets for about twenty years now. Was a full time hockey news writer at The Score, and have been hosting this podcast since 2019. And uh, looking forward to getting into it again today with our latest topic, which is the Bruins missing out on a scoring option on the wing and possibly still needing to um, hedge their bets on the wing as they're looking to give uh, the young guys the leg up here when it comes to grabbing that job. Now, what spurred this on? Daniel Sprong signed a one-year $975,000 contract with the Vancouver Canucks over the weekend. And it's a pretty savvy deal for the Canucks. Um, Contract projections... For Sprong, who's coming off a back-to-back 40-point seasons, ranged from anywhere from $3.378 million to $4.092 million. Both contracts, one from Evolving Hockey, the other from AFP Analytics, both carried three-year terms. Daniel Sprong, yeah, he's been pretty good offensively over the past couple of years and he played last year on a two million dollar deal with the Detroit Red Wings 18 goals 25 assists for 43 points in 76 games the year before that with the Seattle Kraken he had 21 goals 25 assists for 46 points in 66 games Uh, this after being a second round pick of the Pittsburgh Penguins back in 2015. So why was he on the market so long? Why did he only get one year at 975K? Well, the biggest issue, and this was pointed out to me repeatedly on social media, is that he is very suspect defensively. Uh, He was heavily sheltered in the Red Wings system among forwards who played at least 300 five-on-five minutes. He had the lowest ice time on the Red Wings, averaging just 10 minutes per game at five on five uh according to puck iq and this is from uh, vancouver is awesome.com uh according to puck iq he had the lowest percentage of ice time against elite competition on the red wings meaning he was kept from facing the opposition's top players as much as possible he also had the highest percentage of offensive zone starts on the team In other words, he had incredibly sheltered minutes on the Red Wings last season, and apparently for good reason. Despite being sheltered, he was on the ice for the second highest rate of shots against, the second highest rate of scoring chances against, the highest rate of high danger chances against, and the third highest rate of goals against, all according to Natural Statric. Uh, He put up points, but the Red Wings gave up a lot more than he produced when he was on the ice. So that tells you, I guess, basically everything you need to know about Daniel Sprong, who has a tendency to check out defensively, perhaps cheat a bit for offense, maybe get a bit careless with the puck on the breakout. 
and not necessarily a formula for defensive success. And when I talked about this on social media, a lot of people pointed out this deficiency, the fact that the Bruins obviously value two-way play among their forwards. And perhaps it's just a matter of Sprong not being able to fit into the system or meet their expectations, which is fair. There's also reports that he is not the greatest in the locker room. Obviously can't corroborate that, but um, also something to keep in mind. If you're not great without the puck and you're not great in the room, that's going to turn teams off. Having said that, he's still a fantastic offensive player, and that's what the Boston Bruins need at the moment. Over the past two seasons, he's averaged 1.26 goals per 60 minutes at 5-on-5, the 11th highest rate in the NHL, a rate higher than Zach Hyman, Artemi Panarin, Miko Rantanen, Connor McDavid. Obviously, we're not putting him in that level, but when he's on the ice, he is very effective as a scoring winger. He's also a highly effective playmaker. Over the past two seasons, he's averaged one primary assist per 60 minutes at 5-on-5, 17th among all NHL forwards, just behind Sidney Crosby and ahead of Evgeny Malkin. He's effective on the power play, where he had nine goals and 26 points over the past two seasons, primarily playing on the second unit for both the Kraken and the Red Wings. Uh, so the Canucks who already added Jake DeBrusque and Danton Heinen thought that it was worth gambling on Daniel Sprong being offensively productive and whether or not he is able to be, uh, incorporated into Rick Tockett's system. He's a very demanding head coach. The Canucks believe that his defensive issues were tempered by the fact that he is a low-risk, potentially high-reward bet offensively. And if he doesn't work out, either in the top six or in a depth role, it's only a $975,000 cap hit. You could uh, easily bury that in the NHL. Um, So... Daniel Sprong to the Vancouver Canucks, a low risk, potentially high reward offensive bet. And one that I argue the Boston Bruins should have made. Yes. He's not the strongest defensively. Doesn't perhaps fit the mold of a Boston Bruins player, but this team needs goals. Not everybody has to be a Selkie trophy candidate. Not everybody has to be Zdeno Chara in their own end. Sometimes it's okay to have free-flowing, offensive-minded players. And for a team that struggled to score in the playoffs, struggled on the power play, at $975,000, that is an easy bet to make. The reason they didn't do it, and we'll talk about this here as the podcast continues, is that they're betting on Fabian Lysel, but they still will need to hedge that bet by adding someone at some point, and that will likely come in the form of a free agent signing or a PTO. Uh, But we'll talk more about Fabian Lysel and that bet, and hedging that bet, here as the podcast continues. Game Time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch. And with amazing last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. So if you're looking to go to a Red Sox game, or I've already used it up here in Toronto to go to Blue Jays games, you have to get Game Time. I love the panoramic view from your seat, so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the ballpark. And they're all in pricing, means there's no surprise fees at checkout. Take the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets with GameTime. Download the GameTime app, 
create an account and use code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply, but again, create an account and redeem code LOCKEDONNHL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets at the lowest price guaranteed. Go out there and enjoy a Red Sox game via game time. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Boston Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. And while you're on YouTube, check out Locked On Sports Today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you to bring you the latest news, analysis, and opinions from across the Locked On universe, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So the Vancouver Canucks already signed Jake DeBrusque, Danton Heinen, and they added as well a low cost, potentially high reward option in Daniel Sprong. The Bruins lost Heinen, they lost DeBrusque, and they prioritized the center position and defense in free agency bringing in Max Jones, Riley Tufty, but they still need a top six winger who can put the puck in the net. That was already a need for them with DeBrusque and Heinen. And if you compare Sprong to DeBrusque over the past few seasons, although uh, Sprong is, as we said, much lesser of a player defensively, their offensive numbers are not very dissimilar. Um, DeBrusque last season was underwhelming at, uh, let's see, 19 goals, 21 assists for 40 points. Sprong had 18 goals, one fewer, four more assists, and three total points. And over the last three years, uh while DeBrusque had a bit of a leg up the last couple seasons, it's pretty pretty even. Uh, so you could have gotten a DeBrusque replacement offensively, at least, at a much lower cost. Now, the Bruins are, of course, betting on either Fabian Lysel or Georgie Merkulov jumping up and grabbing a spot in the lineup, and that's a, a fair bet. Lysel is 21 years old. He's got a couple pro seasons under his belt. He had... 50 points in 56 games last season down in Providence, 15 goals, 35 assists, a playmaking winger with some finish, and he would have had a chance to be called up had he not been injured later on in the season. 21st overall pick back in 2021. It's high time for him to get a good shot at cracking the lineup out of uh, training camp. And that's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, Don Sweeney has made it clear that they did not sign any wingers because they believe that there is a lot of upside there and that it's possible, likely, that Lysel will be able to crack the lineup and perhaps have a breakout season at the NHL level. Uh, he had a strong season with Providence indicating readiness for the NHL. And he was of course called out by Ryan Mugano for his defensive deficiencies and, uh, for his play without the puck. And we saw that improve and progress as the season went on. Uh, Lysel ranks 88th in the athletics top 100 prospects list. He had, uh, again, 15 goals, 35 assists. And he's they're one of their top prospects. So it's easy to see that while the Bruins prospect pool has challenges, his emergence as a top prospect brings hope for the future. And hopefully he can step in and ride shotgun with Brad Marchand and... Charlie Coyle or Morgan Geeky or Matt Patra or whoever playing uh, center on that line. But here's the thing. It's a, it's a big bet to suggest that he can hang there all season long. 
that you can just pluck him in and not have a backup plan, not have um, somebody in place in case it doesn't work out. Now, will the Bruins trade for a winger before the deadline? That's quite possible. Will they start the season with Lysel, Merkulov, and then see what happens and explore their options? Yeah, that's certainly possible. As we'll talk about on a future episode, their October schedule is pretty difficult, and they can't afford to really stumble out of the gate. So it might behoove them to um, bring somebody in as a free agent or on a PTO at the very least in order to, uh, to hedge that bet. He has the draft position and the offensive acumen to jump to the NHL level and be a productive winger. But he's still young, still fairly raw. And to expect him to jump on the top line or top six and be productive consistently for 82 games is is a tough ask. And it's quite possible he could be sheltered in the same way that Daniel Sprong was in in Detroit and in Seattle. So all that to say, I'm rooting for Fabian Lysel. I think he's got a bright career still ahead of him. Uh, but to expect him to come in as a rookie and light things up at the NHL level like you need a top six winger to do and just keep the Bruins uh, consistent and level and add to the offensive firepower. That's a big ask. And likely the Bruins will need to explore other options of which there are still some available. And uh, we'll discuss that here as the podcast continues. Level up your ride with ebaymotors.com passion drive and patience the formula for winning championships is also what keeps your ride alive ebay motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance superchargers roof racks exhaust kits led headlights and more whether you're into speed power or style ebay motors has you covered they have over 122 million parts for your ride or die and you'll always find exactly what you're looking for With the eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber and not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. And the eBay Guaranteed Fit is available only to U.S. customers. All right, so let's assume Fabian Lysel, Georgie Merkulov are on the opening night roster as the Bruins look to incorporate some more youth into the lineup. But let's also say perhaps they kind of stumble a bit and aren't able to keep things up. There are some guys that they could bring in on the cheap in order to hedge their bets. Sprong is off the table, of course, uh, but James Van Riemsdyk is still available as a left-wing option. Clearly not a top six guy. He was hampered late by an illness. He did contribute 11 goals, 27 assists, but, you know, 35 years old already, perhaps not quite the upside that they're looking for. Maybe they look at Tyler Johnson, who has a right-hand shot and who can play center. Uh, He was a contributing member to the Chicago Blackhawks. Back in the uh, and the Tampa Bay Lightning, he had 17 goals, 31 points in 67 games last year. A valuable member of the Lightning's uh, back in the day as well. So perhaps they give him a look for some veteran leadership. 33 years old. Uh, I've talked before about Kyler Yamamoto, 25 years old. He had an underwhelming season last year in Seattle. Eight goals, eight assists for 16 points. But again, another 
cheap option with some upside there that they could add. Um, there's also Alex Nylander, who we've talked about. He had 11 goals in 28 games last season. Uh, very affordable young prospect who was a top pick in the 20. 20- 16 draft i believe the same draft that max jones and riley tufty were plucked out of um so there are some options out there for the boston ruins philip zadina we've talked about before as a guy who kind of bet on himself had some moments with the san jose sharks last year but perhaps would be able to find his groove playing with countrymen like david pochnock and Pavel Zaka. You talk about guys who maybe aren't great in the room or defensively deficient. What a better situation to step in than the Boston Bruins, who have that leadership uh, groove going, who develop players with two way games, and who demand that of these players. It would be a great opportunity to bring people in on low risk, high reward deals, stop looking to the washed veterans, no disrespect intended to Van Riemsdyk or Kevin Shattenkirk or Milan Lucic experiment, which went horribly awry. But I would love to see the Bruins bet more on these younger guys who have some upside and who could really pop in the right situation, like a Zadina. Uh, like a Sprong who popped in Seattle, Detroit offensively uh, like a Yamamoto perhaps, or uh, some of these younger guys who could still be uh, valuable contributors and at discount rates. And that's the key here for the Boston Bruins because they're still needing to sign um, Jeremy Swayman, of course, They have limited cap space, but they need to get that done. Um, It just has to happen. And um, Andrew Raycroft said as much on the radio the other day. Radio the other day, he said they've got to get done. They've gone through this a little bit last season. So the business side of it, they know where each other stands. Jeremy knows he's very important and he wants to be paid as such. It's kind of absurd that it hasn't gotten done already. Uh, They've traded Linus Allmark. Just get this thing done already. Uh, Once that's done, maybe then they'll revisit the wing with any leftover cap space. But don't forget, you can go over until contracts are locked in prior to the start of the regular season. So Sprong's gone to Vancouver. You can argue the merits of whether the Bruins should have pursued him. I hope at least they evaluated things and, and took a look at it. Um, would have been a nice security blanket if, in fact, Lysel doesn't pop. There's still some other options available, and I pretty much guarantee they will at least have some PTOs or guys in camp as late free agent signings uh, to provide some competition in training camp, to push these younger guys, and to at least make them think, It's not just going to be handed to them. That's today's episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, my friends. Thank you so much for taking some time to listen. I hope you all had a great weekend. Uh, Went camping, which was fun, exhausting, and uh, still worth it, though, to be around the campfire, to be floating in the the lake and et cetera. Uh, We do send our condolences to the Loftus family after the passing of longtime Bruins beat writer Mike Loftus. Uh, think especially of his, his kids, Ben and Jamie, uh, who I've become a huge fan of her work as well with her new podcast, the 16th uh, minute and, uh, her appearances on behind the bastards. She's, she's great as well. So follow her work uh, and condolences to the whole family. Uh, please do take care of yourselves, friends, take care of each other. And we'll talk to you again here on the next episode of locked on Boston Bruins, part of the locked on podcast network, your favorite team every single day.